Hello everybody. Today we're going to be going over field capacity. This video is brought to you in part by Meter Group. What you're going to need to do to run this experiment and test field capacity for your medium is a tote, a scale, a pre-dehydrated medium, doesn't matter if it's cocoa, rock wool, peat, soil, anything, as long as it's completely dehydrated. In this scenario, we're going to be using a 2.2 gallon Dutch Plantain cocoa bag. We'll need the Taros 12, the Arroyo sensor alignment tool, and a notepad. So what we're going to do to run this experiment is we're going to take the pre-dehydrated substrate and first weigh it out. So I'm going to use the scale and weigh this out. In this case, this substrate weighs 899 grams. So I'm going to write that down. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the substrate into the tote and I'm going to fill it up with 2.2 gallons of water or 8,327 milliliters. Just like any good infomercial, I've already done that step. So here it is. Now, what I'm able to do is I'm able to weigh this out. And in this case, it weighs 4,729 grams. So what does that 4,729 grams represent? Well, 4,729 minus the 899 grams, the original weight, gives me 3,830. So that means that there's 3,830 milliliters because one milliliter equals one gram of water. Really simple math. So 3,830 grams means 3,830 milliliters. Now, I know that there's 2.2 gallons of substrate in here. So I could take that 3,830 and divide it by 8,327, and that's gonna give me 46%. The other thing you could do to check and see how much moisture was actually retained is you can measure the leachate. Because once you're done hydrated in medium, you can measure the remaining amount of liquid in the container and that will accurately tell you how much wasn't absorbed by the medium. So they should both equal the same number. Um, now what I'm able to do to test how accurate my sensor is and the sensor placement, which is the key that I'm trying to achieve, is at what height do I get the most accurate reading in this cocoa substrate? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Roya sensor alignment tool I'm gonna align it with the side, and there's multiple different measurements here. There's 1.25, 2 inches, 2.75, and 3.5. What we recommend for a two to three gallon bag is at a two inch height. So I'm gonna take this sensor alignment tool, I'm gonna to place the sensor in here, I'm gonna slide the tool out, and then I'm gonna turn it on. And I shit you not, 46% is what I'm getting as the math. It reads 48.9% moisture. So the VWC in here is reading 48.9% at two inch height. So I would say that's fucking tits on, excuse my language. It's right where I want it to be. Um, so I'm gonna show you though, if I move it down to 1.25 inches, how that reading changes. So if I bring it down to 1.25, it reads 54%. Now you might be asking, well, how does that make sense? Gravity takes a hold of water, and so it's gonna retain more water the lower you go in the substrate. And that's why it's really important for you to know where to place the sensor and what the actual field capacity is. Luckily for you guys, Josh and I already did that work for you. We came up with the idea of the sensor alignment tool and really 
figuring out what these measurements should be. We took the time to measure the fuel capacity at multiple different mediums and then figure out where we got the most accurate reading. So that's why we settled on two inches being the most accurate reading height for the sensor to be placed in a cocoa bag. Um, once again, I really recommend doing this, this simple test for any medium that you're using. Um, in this case of the Dutch Plantain, it's got a lot of uh, chunk to it, so it's not that much fine material, so it's gonna have a lower field capacity than something with a really fine material. Um, if you're using rock wool, using the red rock blocks, they usually tend to carry, uh, uh, retain more water than um, coltoline or a brodan block. Um, each one of them has a little bit different of a field capacity. So no matter which substrate you're using, I recommend doing this test, um, taking the dry medium, hydrating it, and then weighing it. So know the dry weight, the wet weight, and then you'll get an accurate measurement of what it is. If you don't have a scale that can measure these weights, then you could always measure the amount of leachate that came off. So as long as you know the input value and the output value, you'll know how much it retained. Um, this is a really important step because as you're figuring out where to place the sensor using this tool, it's a good way to double check, you know, does that, uh, that height measure out to be the exact same field capacity it's actually carrying. I hope this was helpful and useful. Um, please visit uh, Meter Group for more uh, information. There's a lot of uh, literature on their website on how these sensors work. Um, you could also follow Arroya, follow myself, follow Josh Newinger. Um, we would be more than happy to, to provide and will be providing more videos. Uh, next week we'll be kind of going over um, some more inputs on how to use the Terros 12. Uh, if you are using the full Roya system, we tend to recommend one sensor per 100 square feet. That's because with each medium, it doesn't even matter if it's rock wool, cocoa, soil, you're going to have a little bit difference from medium to medium. So it's really important that you have multiple sensors in any given flower room. So that way you can take the average of those sensors and then utilize that to steer your crop. I hope this was helpful. Hope you have a great day and enjoy your weekend. Thank you guys. Bye.